Well, thanks again for being here today. It's good to see each and every one of you. And trust that uh, we'll be back this afternoon. And then uh, on Wednesday evening, again, 5.30, for uh, a time of uh, giving thanks once again. I want to work a little today cultivating thanksgiving in our hearts and in our lives. So let me invite you to turn to 1 Chronicles 16. If you're using a pew Bible, that's page 373. You can follow along that way, or you can use the message guide that's in your program this morning and just follow along uh, uh, in that way and uh, fill in the blanks as we go, uh, keeping uh, notes if you would like. Um, but again, focus on just the issue, the whole item, the theme of Thanksgiving again today. How many of you like grumblers? Any of you like grumblers? You know, you know what I mean? Like the person that it just seems like it's never a sunny day, even when it is a sunny day. Or the person who can seem to find just something wrong with everything. Or it's just like the person who just perpetually wakes up on the wrong side of the bed. You know, or just never had a good night's sleep. Um, you know, that, that's, uh, you, know, you know, the grumbler. The person who just, you know, finds something wrong with everything. You know, there's, there was never a meal that was prepared right. And it just never, every, something in the meal just didn't taste right for every meal. Um, you know, we, we, we tend not to, to like grumblers. And hopefully, in that same vein, we, we aren't grumblers. Uh, don't want to be that. We prefer, and certainly God would prefer for us to be people who are thankful, who have a more positive outlook on things. As I was uh, thinking about the, uh, the message today, I came across a, um, a study, if you would, uh, done by a professor at Case Western Reserve University. And um, he's, his study was measured, measuring positive emotions in the human life measuring positive emotions in the human life. And this is what his study uh, showed. There were five discoveries from his work. Let me share them with you. The first was this, that 15 minutes a day focusing on what we have to be thankful for will increase your body's natural antibodies. It will increase your antibodies. In other words, you're less likely to get sick if you're a thankful person. He says this Thanksgiving, 15 minutes a day, it sharpens you. It causes you to be more focused and less vulnerable to mental illness, to clinical depression in particular. He says it calms us. Thankfulness induces a psychological state called resonance. It's associated with healthy blood pressure, low stress. Keeps you healthy. It strengthens us, this thankfulness. Thankful caregivers are more healthy than ungrateful, he says, because caregiving can be incredibly draining. And then finally he said it was apparent to him that thankfulness heals us. In a study that he was looking at and what he was able to discover, he said those who have organ transplant, are, are, those who are organ transplant recipients heal faster than those who are not, if you would, thankful. Interesting. Would you rather be a grumbler or a thankful person? I think the study would say, I think it's a little bit better to be a thankful person. Washington, in 1789, President George Washington declared this. He said, whereas it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey his will, to be grateful for his benefits, and humbly to implore his protection and favor. And whereas both houses of Congress have by their joint committee requested me, quote, to recommend to the people of the United States a day of public thanksgiving and prayer, to be observed by acknowledging with grateful hearts the many and sig signal favors of Almighty God, especially by affording them an opportunity peaceably to establish a form of government for their safety and happiness, end quote. Now, therefore, I do recommend to sign Thursday, the 26th day of November next, to be devoted by the people of these states to the service of that great and glorious being who is the beneficent author of all the good that was, that is, or that will be, 
that they may then all unite in rendering unto him our sincere <coughs> and humble thanks for his kind care and protection of the people of this country previous to their becoming a nation, and also that we may then unite in most humbly offering our prayer and supplication to the great Lord and ruler of nations, and beseech him to pardon our national and other transgressions, to enable us all, whether in public or private stations, to perform our several and relative duties properly, crucially, to render our national government a blessing to all people by constantly being a government of wise, just, and constitutional laws discreetly and faithfully executed and obeyed, to protect and guide all sovereigns and nations, especially such as have shown kindness to us, and to bless them with good governments, peace and concord, to promote the knowledge and practice of true religion and virtue, the increase of science among them and us, and generally to grant unto all mankind such a degree of temporal prosperity as he alone knows his best. That's quite a statement, isn't it? A call for public and private thanksgiving. I wonder if that kind of call befits a nation, befits a people, if it shouldn't also in a greater way befit those who would call themselves believers, who would call themselves Christians, who are part of a heavenly kingdom, who are able to recognize where all the blessings really come from, and from whose hand they are delivered. Thankfulness is a quality that's shared by those who come to have and to know Jesus as their Savior. Thankfulness is a sweet quality of life. David put it this way. If you want to follow along, you'll notice it's on your, your program there. And we see it in Psalm 54. He says this, I will freely sacrifice to you. I will praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. He's not saying here that he needs to give up something, but what he is saying here is that he will bring an offering of his life that is thankful, that his life will characterize and be characterized by thankfulness, by, by offering this continual praise to his name for the blessings that he has been given. It's repeated over in the book of Hebrews in chapter 13. Therefore, by him let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name giving thanks to his name. It's a call to bring sacrifice, a sacrifice of praise for his deeds. We ought to be thankful. It's a sign of a transformed life, a life that has been transformed by God. In Romans chapter 1, Paul writes, it's the duty of, of all men to give thanks. Romans chapter 1, verse 20, he says, because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. They didn't glorify him as God. They didn't give thanks to him. And so their thinking became foolish and futile. Paul writes to Timothy in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, his second letter to him, and he writes about the end times and what things would signal the last days and as he writes to him, he says, difficult times, as he begins the, the chapter, difficult times are going to come, they're going to come and they're going to stay. But he says this, there is, these are some signals, Timothy, for you to look for. Notice, he says, Timothy, that people will become lovers of self, they will become ungrateful. Ungrateful. In contrast, we see in Scripture a number of, of verses that speak about the issue of thankfulness. Over Philippians chapter 4, this is, uh, many of you will know this particular verse, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. Continuing in the book of Colossians in chapter 2, verses 6 and 7, as you therefore have received Jesus Christ the Lord, so walk in him rooted and built up in him, established in the faith as you, have, as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Colossians 2, 6 and 7. And again, Colossians 4, verse 2. Continue earnestly in prayer, being diligent, vigilant, pardon me, in it with thanksgiving. 
Again, again, and again, thanksgiving characterizing our life, our attitude, our prayer. The way we go about things characterized by a sense of gratitude. Paul made it obvious, again, in Ephesians chapter 5, that that was what was to be on our lips. He says this, but fornication, all uncleanness, covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather, he says, the giving of thanks. He says all of that other stuff that seems to flow out of your mouth so easily, and those other things that you do that seem so hard to avoid and so hard to say no to and that you know you shouldn't be participating in because that's not in keeping with God's will and desire for you. He says you put those things away. That's not how you are to live. He says rather let your voice and the things that you do be characterized with the giving of thanks. Thankfulness exalts God. It makes Him the only one worthy of praise. It acknowledges that He is the source of every good thing, the source of life. So today, what I want to do is, is look at a, a psalm of thanks, 1 Corinthians, sorry, 1 Chronicles 16, and I want to use it to kind of gather together some things to guide us in our thanksgiving. In 1 Chronicles 16, again, David calls the people together in these verses. And the ark, that, uh, that um, holder of the, the tablets that came down off the Mount of Moses and the other special worship items has arrived in Jerusalem. And so there is a lot of celebration that's going on because these very special things have come, if you would, home. Today we don't have artifacts, we don't have, if you would, in art, we don't have those types of things. We have the Word and we have what God is doing in our heart. And so for these people, these particular items were, were very, very special. And they were a central facet in their faith. So in light of the blessing of it coming back, David calls together the people and he wants to prepare their hearts to give thanks for his blessings and the, the presence that God has given them. And so he appoints leaders to help in the giving of thanks. And so notice, if you would, there are three verses here where people are called out for this specific task in this, this chapter. If you look first in verse 4 of chapter 16, verse Chronicles, and he appointed some of the Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord, to commemorate, to thank, and to praise the Lord God of Israel. He appointed some to be specifically about giving thanks. Verse 7, on that day David first delivered this psalm to the hand of Asaph and his brethren to thank the Lord. So Asaph and his brethren are there and their purpose, their work is to thank the Lord. Continue on a little bit further on, verse 37 and verse 41, this is what he says. He says, so he left Asaph and his brothers there before the ark of the covenant of the Lord to minister before the ark regularly as every day's work required. And with them, Haman and Jeduthun, uh, and the rest who were chosen, who were designated by name to give thanks to the Lord because his mercy endures forever. How do you think it would be if Thanksgiving is such an important thing, if we were to say as a church, we need to have people, we need to, we need to designate people all the time to be giving thanks. You know, there's that sense in which if everybody owns a responsibility, nobody owns a responsibility. You know what I'm saying? You ever been on a board or a committee and it's like, well, we'll be responsible for that, but nobody is really responsible because everybody thinks the other person is responsible for that thing? Could it be that there are moments when from Bethany there is no thanks being offered or given? Could it be that there are times when we're so consumed with stuff that that spirit of gratitude and that attitude of thanksgiving isn't present somewhere in our midst or among us? I wonder, I wonder if David didn't have something there where, where he said, These, you're designated to give thanks. This is what you need to do. This is your ministry, Asaph and his brethren. 
So he recognizes, David, that this giving of thanks is important. And so he makes it the specific text of some to just, if he would, give thanks. So today's transforming truth, before we get to the three points I want you to see today, is this. It is the task of every believer, not just the ones that get appointed. It is everyone's task to offer thanksgiving to God. That if you have received from him the gift of salvation, if you recognize his goodness in providing a son, then, then you have an awesome responsibility in the return of thanks for his great love. If you looked at thanks as a job, I wonder, here's one way to think about it. If thanks is our job as a Christian, have you earned your paycheck? Have you earned your paycheck? Now, that's kind of a worldly way of looking at it. But I think it communicates. How thankful are we? And how much time do we devote to the giving of thanks along the way? And how mindful are we of the need to, to follow this and to, to be obedient in the giving of thanks? So Asaph and his brothers here, the lead worshipers. Once they once they, they get about to this, we find this template, if you would, this psalm. And uh, I think it was in my Friday email. I said, or or maybe it was the Facebook post. I said, do you realize that there are psalms outside of the Book of Psalms? That there are psalms, spiritual, outside of the Book of Psalms. They're 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 out there, and this is one of them. And David shares it with Asaph and the other leaders in worship as a template for how they are to give thanks. And so pick it up, if you would, in verse 8. It says this, O oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing to him. Sing psalms to him. Talk of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength forevermore. Remember his marvelous works, which he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O seed of Israel, his servant, you children of Jacob, his chosen ones. So it's a call here that David shares with these individuals to give thanks. And there are three things that I, I think are a part of this psalm that, that will remind us and will help us to be thankful. And so the first one is this this morning, that thankfulness and thanksgiving requires remembering Him. It requires remembering the source of the things that we have to be thankful for. In verse 12, this is what he says. He says, remember His marvelous works which He has done, His wonders and the judgments of His mouth. Certain men here were told to help others remember because we forget. Remembering stirs our heart. Remember, he said, verse 15, remember his covenant forever, the words which he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant which he made with Abraham and his oath to Isaac. In remembering, thank him. Remember that he is the one who provided it. In the Old Testament, we see again and again and again, there are reminders that are left behind for people to be thankful. When the people of God crossed the Red Sea and came, away from their captivity in Egypt. When they got to the other side, we see that Joshua and the leaders, that, that they led them in, in, if you would, building a little pillar, if you would. And that was to be there. And often we see these pillars are built in the Old Testament so that when people would come that way again or come to that place and they would say, who built this or what's this about? People would know. This is there because this is where God did this. This is how God met them here. This is the way that God worked in this situation. And they were there to remember. They were there to remember. In the book of 1 Samuel, in chapter 7, we see that Samuel encourages the people of God to build what he calls an Ebenezer. An Ebenezer. It's a word that means, thus far the Lord has helped us. It was there to remind them to give thanks. Thus far, God has prospered us. God has brought us this far. And so let's mark this 
so that we can remember it. Jesus, on the night was, and, and on which uh, he was betrayed, what did he say? He says he took bread and he broke it. He said, this is my body broken for you. After that, they gave thanks for the cup and they said, this is my, my blood shed for you. It's a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim my, my, my death until I come. What's it say on the front of this table here where we do this and we're remembering this? In remembrance of me. One of the, the first ways that we need to understand and build our thankfulness is just by simply remembering. We forget so quick. We forget so quick. We're forgetful people. And so David recognized that and he said, people of Asaph and, and guys, you need to be reminding people along the way. Remind them of how good God has been. So much of the Psalms is, is focuses on the idea of just recounting the way that God had worked for his people. Recounting the ways that God had met them. So I wonder, will you remember on Thursday? Will you remember today? How he has worked and shown his grace to you. So Thanksgiving requires a measure of remembering, but it also second requires some singing. Some singing. Look at verse 23. It says, Sing to the Lord all the earth, proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Music has a way of placing in our heart great truth. Music has a way of reminding us of things that perhaps we once forgot. Music is a way, and, and the beauty of music and hymns and all different types of songs is that they remind us and they continually place in us reminders of the things that God has done, who he is and what he has done. And so singing is not just something we do because we like to sing. We recognize there is another purpose behind singing, and that is in the singing of good music, and in the singing of music that, that highlights teaching with regard to God and who he is, in the singing of those things, we are reminding ourselves and we are learning about the God who has been good to us, to whom we give thanks. And so David says there's, there's an aspect of singing. I hope you'll come back tonight. I hope you'll come and you'll be ready to sing. Because all that's what we're going to do. We're not, we're not talking, we're singing. Because we want to be reminded of those good things. <coughs> and so we sing. We lift our voice. We lift our voice to the Lord. It places great truth <coughs> in our heart. 16.9, it says this, Sing to him, sing psalms to him, Talk of all his wondrous works. Sing to him. Sing to the Lord. We don't, we don't pick the music for Sunday morning, the worship leaders and stuff, in order, if you would, necessarily to, to make people happy. We hope you like the music that gets picked. But we pick the music that we pick because we feel it will communicate something to you, hopefully, that is meaningful that connects into the bigger picture of what we might be talking about that day, or to remind you of something. There's some ways in which the music that gets picked is just an extension of the spiritual life of the person who's doing the picking. You know, God's been speaking to me about this, this and, and so, so here's something I want to communicate and, and speak to in music and encourage people to embrace. He is the focus in the music that we sing. He is the reason that we sing. We might not all be equally gifted in this area. Any amen to that? We're not all equally gifted musically, but we can all bring the gift of thanks in song. Singing has a vertical and a horizontal component. It, it's our expression to God, but it also helps others. It cultivates thankfulness. So sing hearty. Sing out. Sing out. Thanksgiving requires remembering. David says it requires singing. If we lift our voices, it's, it's communication. But finally, let me share this. Thanksgiving requires talking about him. It really is focused on him. It's not necessarily, if you would, about someone else or something else. Or it, it's about him. We remember what he has done, but we remember, if you would, 
that he's the one who has done it. Verse 24, 25 and 26, declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among all peoples. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised, he is also to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. We do it with our families. We ascribe to him the glory due his name. 28 and 29, give glory, or give to the Lord, O families of the people, in your family, give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. I think if God was more a part of our just everyday talking and everyday whatever, this would be a whole lot easier. Wouldn't it? But sometimes God isn't a whole lot of part of our day and our talking. And so when we finally do get to it, we feel a little weird about it. Maybe we even feel a little embarrassed about it. But if the central focus of our life was pleasing Him and, and accomplishing His purposes in us and giving thanks for the ways that he has blessed us and for who he is and the things that he's done should be very easy for us. And it should grow in greater ease for us to be able to give thanks and to make God a part of our conversation moment by moment. So the chapter here, as it goes on, he provides with this rem reminder and this issue of singing and raising our voices and this issue of talking about him. And, and so what do we talk about? What is it that we're supposed to be talking about? Well, the first thing he says, we talk about who he is. We talk about who he is. In verse 34, as the chapter is, is kind of winding down, he says this, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, he is goodness. He is merciful, for his mercy endures forever. Is he good? Yes. This is who he is. Is he, is he merciful? Yes. It's part of who he is. And so we talk about who he is. One of the things that you will notice on the prayer guide that's given out each week is, is a character or a, a, a quality of God that reminds us about who he is. And my favorite part of those is, are the first ones. They're all alphabetical as we work through them. But the first ones that we get to are like all powerful, all sufficient, all, all you know, the omnis, if you would. You know, the omnis of God. And wow, I think about the, that God is all knowing, that He's all powerful, that He's, he's, he's all present, he's, he's, he's omnipresent, He's there with you. Scary. He's there with you wherever you are at. to be thankful for who he is. And so if you wonder or you struggle, why do I have to be thankful for it? Just use that. And each week there's another item there with the scripture passages that go along with it. Kind of leads you in that. But we're thankful for who he is. He's good. He's merciful. He's faithful. He's gracious. He's kind. He's gentle. But second, we talk about what he has done. Talk about what he has done. David says this, and say, save us, O God, of our salvation. Gather us together. Deliver us from the Gentiles to give thanks to your holy name, to triumph in your praise. What does David say to give thanks for for his salvation? The people of God in the Old Testament were troubled. They were always people beaten up on them, people coming in, and they were captives, and then they were free, and they were captives again, and then they're free. That isn't so much our lot today, but we can give thanks for what he has done. And the most amazing thing that he has done is he has offered us salvation in Christ. That he has offered us forgiveness for our sins through the gift of Jesus on the cross for us. If you struggle with something to give thanks for, that's, that's just a great place to start, isn't it? Just start there, and the rest will follow. Because once you allow Christ to get into your life and you accept him, then your life begins to transform, it begins to change. The you that you used to know is not you any longer. We call that, we call that not salvation, but then we call it sanctification. That the old man is being put away, the new man is coming to life. We take off the old clothes 
and we put on like a new set of clothing. So if we begin with Christ and his salvation and we work from there, we'll find stuff to give thanks for. We give thanks for what he has done, the gift of his salvation. So I wonder this morning in closing, just very simply this, I wonder, I wonder, do you know who he is? Do you know who he is? Do you know who God is? Do you know who Jesus is? And how well do you know? Do you know who he is? But then second, as we see seen here, have you considered what he has done? And how he has made every wonderful and good gift available to you in Jesus. Who is he? And what has he done? Just simple thoughts. But thoughts that should lead us to great thanksgiving this Thanksgiving. So to this morning, remember, join us this afternoon and lift your voices and sing. And it takes time to talk about who he is. This Thursday, around the table with your family or with your friends or those that you invite to be together, take a moment and just say, hey, what has God done this year? How has He blessed you and your family? Remember that goodness and offer it up in thanks. Father, we thank you for this morning. And Lord, we do that each week. We thank you for the opportunity to gather and to worship and to, um, to sing and to pray, to be reminded from the word. And today as we think about this particular season of Thanksgiving, Lord, we, we ask that gratitude would permeate, Lord, each, each part of who we are, what we do, and what we say. And that our thanksgiving might grow because we think about who you are and what you have said and what you have done and the amazing ways that you have blessed us. Lord, we pray and we ask that in our comings and goings we might be reminded. Reminded of you. And we might lift our voices in song even when our voice is feeble. God, we might have boldness to talk about you and make you a part of our conversation as we come and go. Lord, help us to be more bold about our relationship with you and the ways that you have worked in our life. Lord, we look forward to giving thanks this week. And we pray and we ask that you might grow us to be a more thankful people. For we pray in Jesus' name.